I would like to send my warm greetings to all Marists of Champagne as we journey together as a global family. Even though there have been many messages sent to various groups, today I have the pleasure of addressing all Champagne's Marists one year out from the general chapter. I remember well the words I spoke at the closing of the chapter, that the new beginning has already begun. There are many signs of this. I would like to share five of them with you, based on the chapter calls. Over these days, we are giving thanks for the life and witness of our brother and River Jess, who gave his life to his tragic end in Algeria, along with 18 other religious and a bishop. This witness of faith, even to death, has been recognized by the church, and they have been beatified or proclaimed blessed. Brother Henri was just 64 years old when he died as a martyr, having spent 25 years in Algeria, working with the young people. What a joy and a grace for our Marist family to be able to count among us such great weaknesses of faith and dedication across the five continents. Their gift of themselves by their generous and faithful commitment over a lifetime, living out their consecration and dedicating themselves to mission. As I look back over the past year and a bit, since the general chapter in Rio Negro, Colombia, I give thanks for so much happening in the Institute by way of responding to the chapter calls and how it is generating life and hope. At the same time, I ask myself how we might respond better, personally and as an Institute, to these calls and in the years to come. Looking back, I'm very grateful for the way the General Council has begun its life together, looking for ways to strengthen our life as a community and as a work team, together with the animation of all the management groups with the General Administration, all of us at the service of the Institute as a whole. We have set out to be present in various parts of the world through contact visits, and I hope that by June 2019, we will have made at least a contact visit to all the provinces and districts. The new constitutions has been another long but joyful task that has taken up our time. We are now in the phase of final review and gaining approval. The draft rule of life has also been completed as well, and, and we hope to formally approve in the next February. We want to make use of this text to shed light and inspire our way of life, especially that of the brothers, as we seek to respond better to what God is asking of us. We have tried to internalize the calls of the chapter and have come up with a plan intended as a guide and direction setting for the coming years. The plan was developed in dialogue and consultation with the provinces and districts. 
We adopted an image for inspiration, that of the steps taken by Marceline and the First Brothers from Lavala in the year 1817 to the construction of the house at the Hermitage that was opened in 1825. This period of eight years corresponds to our eight, eight years as a general council. In 2025, we will celebrate the bicentenary of the house at the Hermitage. In the light of the main call of the chapter, journeying together as a global family, we have in initiated three broad programs. We want to be more determined about journeying with marginalized young people and continuing to give a bold response to the emerging needs of our world. This is our mission program, journeying. We want to strengthen our sense of being a family, of belonging, as brothers and lay people, all of us Champagne Marists, through projects that are formative and that generate new life. Thus, our program for Marist life is called as a family. We want to increase our practice of networking, and this on a global scale, through a program designed to strengthen various types of networks, aimed at greater synergy and connectedness as a congregation and with other institutions. Coming back to the image of the construction of the Hermitage, we can imagine and remember the different moments they lived, they lived through, the evolution and transfer, transformation that took place in those early years. We can imagine Champagne and the First Brothers in their tiny house. And so they, their need for something bigger until they were finally able to have what we know now as the house of the Hermitage. We may have the same courage, daring and strength of Champagne in those initial years. A combination of brotherhood, commitment, first steps in ministry, the construction of a, of a house, the building of a family. May this same, same spirit be ours today. Speaking of our global family, I would like to mention one aspect that keeps coming up strongly in our institute. This is in relation to our global availability for international mission. I want to link this with being faces of mercy and the need to listen to God and to be filled with God's spirit. The chapter invited us to a new and deeper spirituality, one that integrates our lives and is down to earth. Only when we are filled with God's mercy will we be able to be faces and hands of mercy for others. Since its origin, some 12 years ago, Brothers and lay people have committed part of their lives to a new mission begun by the Institute in various countries of Asia. Originally, it was called Mission Adjentes. Nowadays, the Maris District of Asia. Last August, all of us on the General Council made a contact visit to these countries, Bangladesh, India, West Bengal, Thailand, Vietnam, and Cambodia. We were full of admiration 
for the journey they have undertaken, sometimes facing difficulties and challenges, beginning with learning a new language and inculturation. Some have dedicated three, six, nine, 12 years of their lives in these places. We were also happy to see that their mission is directed at those most in need and that new vocations are appearing in some of these countries. Also, four years ago, we began an initiative in the Institute to form international communities for a new beginning, which have been given the name Lavala 200, in recognition of the bicentenary. A good number of brothers and lay people have attended the formation program for this initiative and are currently members of seven communities spread across the five continents. Syracuse, Sicily, Italy, Moinesti, Romania, East Harlem, New York, United States, Tabatinga, Brazil, Atlantis, Cape Town, South Africa, Mondrut, in Australia, and the latest to start soon in Cuba. They are communities drawing their resourcing and support from the Marist regions. We greatly appreciate the commitment of this group of brothers and lay people who are sharing life and mission as Marists in the service of the most needy. We have learned a lot along the way. Real life has revealed both positive aspects and challenges as they, as they feel their way forward, and we need to evaluate and improve the initiative. Last June, at the Hermitage, I was witness to a group of 16 brothers and lay people who generously made themselves available to join these communities. They are a gift to the Institute. Besides these projects, I should mention our presence in South Sudan over the past seven years, where today we have two brothers in an intercongregational project. Also, the Fratelli project, which we started in Lebanon four years ago, along with the La Salle brothers. Their brothers and lay people from both congregations are involved day after day in a project serving refugees fleeing wars in the Middle East. There are other places as well where Maris are involved in international collaboration for mission in a variety of ways, as short-term volunteers, engaged in formation houses, or other forms of service. Among these places, there is the international community of brothers and lay people at Notre Dame of Hermitage in France, formed in 2010 when the Maris places were renovated. They share life and mission at the service of pilgrims who want to get in touch with our origins and revitalize their Marist spirituality. I believe that such experiences and projects are a visible expression of what we Marists want to see more of as we strive to be a global family. Maybe you, brother or lay, hearing these words, feel an attraction within, a call to be involved in international mission in one of these projects for two, three, or more years. Have you thought about it? I invite you to listen such call in discern what this inner voice is saying. We need more Marists in these such international projects. God could be touching your heart and inviting you to be his hands of mercy. If this is how you feel, 
Do not hesitate to speak to your provincial or district leader, to express your feelings and follow through on how you may want to respond. At times, we may think that we have to be superheroes to launch out into such projects. Rather, I think that what is needed is to be someone with a passion for Jesus and passion for poor young people. Someone who wants to live with integrity on a daily basis. Someone who is open to learning and working alongside others. It involves accepting that success in intercultural and international living comes from being really open and forgetting oneself. And that the experience is one of constant growth. When I call to mind our blessed brother and River Jess, so many other martyrs and so many missionaries throughout the history of our institute, I ask myself, what was the main source of the strength as it was for, for Champagne? I believe that it was their passion for Jesus and their passion for poor young people. Their commitment, their forgetfulness of self. The same can equally be said of so many brothers and lay people who give devoted service every day to children and young people in Maris schools around the world in the really important work of formal education. In all kinds of social works and non-formal education and in so many other activities. Champagne Marists bringing the Institute to life wherever they are. I will also like to share some thoughts on my experience during the whole month of October at the Synod on Young People, the Faith and Vocational Discernment. It was a beautiful experience of church as communion with the Pope, young people, bishops, religious and lay people. I'm happy to say that as a church, we want to renew our commitment to be with the youth, to stand alongside them, to make our way together. The Synod confirmed a number of our chapter intuitions and certainly affirmed our charism and mission among young people. The Synod document will be available soon and will be very enlightening for us. I invite you to develop processes of, for reflecting on key points from the Synod and their application. At one point, the document states that the participation of young people has contributed to revitalizing the Synod process, an essential dimension of the Church. That is being open to journeying with young people with all the various groups with whom we constitute the church. And above all, letting young people take the lead. The Synod discussed faith and vocational discernment. I think it created a great opportunity to examine how well we are accompanying each young person in his or her own search for meaning in life and his, his or her personal vocation, and especially how we are accompanying and welcoming those who feel an inner call to live out the Marist charism as a brother, as a lay person, and always welcoming such movements of the spirit as a gift. We have just begun the season of Advent, and the first image that comes to mind is the one of Mary pregnant 
Mary waiting, full of hope. She continues to be our inspiration. Champagne frequently said, Mary, this is your work. From the moment I was elected, I have felt very much at peace in the knowledge and sense that our institute is the work of God, is the work of Mary. There is no need to be afraid to embrace the new, as Mary did. No need to fear leaving behind whatever may be stopping us from moving forward, tying our hands, or slowing us down. Her heart was full of the fire of God. And for this reason, she was capable of saying yes to the call of the Lord and embracing the new. May this time of Advent be a time of renewing our yes to Jesus Christ with all its risks as she did. As the General Council, we would like to wish you all the best for Christmas and the new year. May we together find the model for building our global Mary's family in Jesus, Mary, and Joseph. May our God, who became human like us, be our home, light, and bridge in 2019. And may we find him in poor young people and in the peripheries of our world. For now, with a thankful heart, I wish each of you a happy Christmas and a happy 2019. Many thanks.